Hey guys, can you hear me now? I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden the other one stopped working. So I started over. I have no idea what happened, Cooter. All of a sudden it stopped working. So it looks like people are finding us okay. I just clicked on the search thing for YouTube and to see if it was up there, but I couldn't find it up there. Um, and I noticed that Mommy Rambling's sister is doing a video. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, we'll see how many people figure out that the other one isn't up there anymore. Cooter has selective hearing. You hear what you want to hear. Hidden in plain sight. Let's see. It says, okay, listen. Shanann had twins while Chris was in Colorado for six months. Do you know that? Tell us more, hidden in plain sight. Tell us what you know. I receive information from people who contact me to tell me all sorts of different things. And I ask a lot of questions and everything. And the people who have called me about her having children before Christopher Watts, so far they've said that it was before Christopher Watts. So I don't know, maybe they met, maybe they meant before they got married. Hi, Ruth Ann. Glad you found us. Yeah, the other one just stopped working, so I just started a new one. So Hidden in Plain Sight is going to tell us more, hopefully. Shay says, I always thought it was strange that he went out there first since he was the stable one with jobs and education. I thought that was very strange, especially when you look at the timeline, Shay, because in December, she posted on her personal Facebook, whatever, that she was buying textbooks because she said she was starting a nursing program the first week in January. And then in the first week of January in 2012, she posted that she was on her way to school and she had a little map and I think she stopped at Starbucks and got some coffee. And then she posted at one point that she was sitting in class and people said, well, you shouldn't be texting then if you're, or you shouldn't be posting on social media if you're sitting in class. And then she said that the instructor was late, which I thought, yeah, sure, okay. Oh, Honey Badger's here. Hey, Honey Badger, you want to come up? Just holler. Oh, wait, I'll do the thingy because I don't think I've done the thingy yet. Do you guys remember Honey Badger? There, I put the thingy there if you want to come on up on the panel, Honey Badger. So back to the shade thing. It was very strange. Why did he have to go out there first? That's absolutely strange. And why on earth did she try to claim that she was starting a nursing program when they were moving? None of that makes any sense. Okay, good. Honey Badger says, I'll come up in a minute. Sweet. Honey Badger knows more about this case than I ever could. I think. And I love it when other people 
are so well versed on the details of this case because I think for too long, I think that a lot of people were afraid to even discuss this case with all the stupid harassment going on against us. Here's a, here's a long one, let's see what it says. Maria says, why was there no scar found on SW's neck in her autopsy? Her autopsy had no mention of her scar or hardware from her neck surgery. Autopsy said no surgeries at all. Actually, Maria, I think it did mention the hardware, but it said no scars, which is inconsistent. But I'm not sure. I just know if I were moving with my partner, whichever one wasn't working or making more money would probably go first. Exactly. Hidden in plain sight says, I'll come up. Okay, great. Um, do I, I'll post it again. Here's the thing, Majiggy. You just click on that and then I'll click on your thingy and then you'll come up. Boutique Girl 24 says, I don't think it's that strange. He went first. My husband headed to another state for four weeks because I packed up our old house and he started a new job. I think the strange part is that she was claiming that she was starting a nursing program. <laughs> like, why start a nursing program if you're moving, you know? Plus, remember, she told Christopher Watts that her doctor said that she had to move to Colorado. I don't think that's how that works in real life, right? Hence in the video of 911 call from N.A. where she said she was supposed to go on a play date with her, quote, other two daughters. I did a video on that and boy, oh boy, did the attackers go wild. Don't worry, doing life. We don't black. Okay, here comes doing... Um... Doing life my way, I don't know if you know it. Wait. But your name is on your thingy? Do you want me to click on it or do you want to change your name fast? You know what I'm saying? Oh, wait. Never mind. That's the name you use. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Hey there. Hello. Okay, hey there. We have we have Angela and we have Honey Badger. Hey everyone. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How about you, Miss Mensa? Hey, I'm doing okay. Um I got an email from um I think it was Ima, I'm not sure, saying uh Man, I was hoping you would do a live this weekend, so I thought, okay. So I clicked on the thingy. Um, Angela was talking in the chat about twins. Yeah, um, well, this is what I was told. Um, I have family members in North Carolina that said they know the family and knew Chris and Shanann before they moved to Colorado. Now, I don't know how true it is, but what they were saying was she had twins. That's why Chris went out six months earlier. And she gave them up because she knew the drama it would cause within the family. And ended up being the twins were given to a couple in Colorado. And Cece and Bella ended up going to the same school they went to, the Primrose School. And that would be why in NA's 911 call, she said she was going on a play date with her other two daughters. So she had like an open adoption going on? I guess. I don't know. And Chris did know it. Well, but that's they weren't what I was, They were the owner of Dirty South. He was well, the that's father. What, that's what I was told, except the difference was that it was before she met Chris is what I was told. And I, I was, was told, told that they, they were taken <laughs> away. At, I was told they were taken away at birth. Yeah, there's different stories, but I do believe she had other kids. I mean... In the one teenage picture when she was with her family, 
She was standing sideways in a purple dress. Looked like she had a baby bump to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I, Is that I when agree. she went to that dance with her brother? Maybe. I Didn't don't know. Didn't she go to some homecoming with one, with her brother? Yeah. And he yeah, said something brother. about it in the police report. He said, yeah, he says, uh, he says she could have picked any guy, but she chose me. Like, why the hell would you bring your brother? Well, and there was, was a little problem. Exactly. <laughs> I seen that picture. Thank you. And that's the dress, I think, that was like not the right year, right? The style the of that dress. dress. It was the blue yeah. dress. And that was like a homecoming dress. I remember it's kind of like dated to when I was in that grade because I'm close in age to her. And I wore that dress was popular that year. That's why I think that she's not the age that she claims to be. I think she's a lot older than we've been told. Well, that would make sense. I think she was born in the 80 or 81. Like at the um, barbecue that they were supposed to tell that she was 45 or something. Yeah, she was telling Chris to lie to his mom and dad and to tell them that she was 40. Yeah, and, and that's weird. Yeah, yeah, that is totally weird. That There's nothing normal about that. Unless she was actually older and she was... Try, you know, they say like subconsciously, you know, subconsciously trying to tell trying them to without telling them. them. That way, if they exactly. found out, yeah. remember, I told remember, you I, told I, was you I was older. Exactly. Or if, or if they were to ever say anything about how she seemed older to them, then she could just say, "Can't they let that go? It was just a joke," you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing is weird. Well, I hey, do I'm believe gonna that the panel because it's echoing. So I'm just gonna step off now. Okay, sorry about that. Maybe, it's is me. It, Maybe okay. I can figure out how to. No, no, I'm, I'm done. I just wanted to put that out there without typing all that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> before you go, um, Angela, before you go, the people who you know who knew them before they moved to Colorado, did, uh -huh. is, did they ever share with you whether or not she worked during that time frame? Because from what we're being told, she was she quit her job within like three weeks of meeting him. Do you know if that was true? No, that was true. So if she was pregnant, <laughs> the time, then that would be a different yeah. storyline too. If she got I don't pregnant. Know. I, did, I never wanted to say anything because I don't know how true it is. I mean, well, anyone can lie, but it, it makes is, sense to me. It does make sense. And it also... I think it's interesting that so many people are saying it. And also, I, they told me that she was under investigation in North Carolina, and that's why they had to get out of there for uh, doctor shopping. for Because you don't get oxycotton or oxycodone for lupus. You just don't. I was told that she was known at the hospital emergency rooms that it was like on her under her name. That yeah, she was they, they had her name on the list. Yeah, that she was known as a seeker. Yeah, same thing as doctor shopping, I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's interesting. But you're right. That call that Nicole Atkinson made to the police saying that she had a play date with her other two daughters, you know, she didn't stumble, she didn't stutter. You know, I don't know how on earth people can say, oh, well, she just meant whatever. You know, they come up with all sorts of interesting excuses. She said it very clearly. She had a play date with her other two daughters. Wasn't there something with a Hallmark card or something? Didn't you do a video about that, Miss Mensa? Yes, yes. Um, there was a drawing or a giveaway or whatever for the Hallmark books. And um, the remember those books where you could read on the tape and then it would be reading the story for the child. Yeah, so they can record like, your voice. Yeah. And she was entering a drawing for to win those Hallmark storybooks. And she entered under her name. And then the very next entry was under an anonymous profile. And it was for her mother, who had two grandchildren out in Colorado. Yes. And it was immediately following her entry. Do you remember the date? Um, it does seem like it was 2009, but that's just off the top of my head, so I don't know. It seems like it was 2009. So that would have been, 
Well, she could have, I don't know. But I don't remember, so I don't know. I could dig through my other computer and see if I can find it. Um, Because I know I, I did a video on it. So and what you know, else is going on in the Chris Watts world? I've been... I've been kind of off the grid for the uh -huh. weekend. So. Well, um, AD said a couple of days ago that he watched a video. I went up on the panel with Cher mm -hmm. and with, with Megan J. And we were talking about how when the interest dies down on the case discussion on this case, how then like her dad went and stood at the end of the driveway and then all of a sudden everyone was talking about it again. And then interest died down, and then the lawyers talked, you know, how it seems like every time the interest dies down, then all of a sudden, the, you know, Netflix comes out, right? And so I said something like, you know, it was organized, and the people who are attacking us don't even know anything about the case. They don't even know how to spell her name. And AD said on his live chat, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that he watched that live chat and he said Cher and Megan Jay and Miss Mensa are right. <laughs> wow. oh, yeah. That's yeah, huge dude. coming from him. <laughs> yep. So that's that's the newsworthy. <laughs> there have been some pretty good discussions going on. I think, you know, I think a lot of people are fed up with the BS, quite frankly, and they're saying what they think about the case now because they're just not gonna they're not going to get bullied into silence. And I think well, that's. They shouldn't have to. They shouldn't exactly. have to. Exactly. People, everybody needs to suck it up and say what needs to be said. Well, you know, I was, you know how you think when you drive, right? I was thinking and driving. And there's, there's a, like a, there's an elephant in the middle of the room that we haven't discussed. You know, I, I don't know. I said this in one of the other live chats. I'm trying to finish this book, right? And I keep like holding back a little bit, right? It, like there's a lot that I want to say, but but I hold back, and I think, well, uh, uh. and then I think, no, bullshit. I'm gonna start treating this case discussion and anything that I write about this case. I'm gonna start treating it like it's any other true crime case that I've written on or that I've discussed in the past. Because just because a bunch of scumbag attackers think that they can pull their crap doesn't mean that we should be, you know, holding back. And so the elephant in the room, do you remember when you were on the live chat before when you said that about the um, public record? With Frankie? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Supposedly, there are supposedly thousands of people who are, you know, so in awe of this young man, right? Yeah, sure. Well, since when? In awe <laughs> for, for reasons that aren't obvious, right? Well, and since when, you know, the stuff that we talk about with this case. Maybe in awe of his, of his bullshit behavior. Maybe they're in awe of that that he actually thinks he can have people arrested on YouTube for talking about a case that's in the public eye. Well, and, and the thing about the case itself too, since when is it okay? Since when do people think they need to applaud somebody? But let's treatment? think about it. Let's say they're covering something up, right? They're right. going to fight people tooth and nail who are talking about it. Right, but society as a whole is viewing those videos and saying, "Ah, she was such a wonderful wife and mother." It's, it's, it's all like gaslighting. They're gaslighting everybody. Like, look what the what's going on in the government right now. Look at the things that are going on. It's the same shit, same tactics. Excuse my language. So it's like to to like here's the bouncing ball. Look over here. It's the criminals. It's, that's what criminals do. That's what criminals do. Yeah. That's why to me the Rusex are criminals. Like the Rusex have something to hide. Well, okay. If they're, well, if, they're, if they're if they're concerned about covering up sh whatever Shanann was involved in, why? Why do they need to? Why do they need to scrub the internet of her presence? They have a memorial account. Why do they need to go around and delete all kinds of stuff for what? If Chris is in jail and he's the one who did it, who cares what people talk about? Right. 
Exactly. There's something more going on. And you know what? I think this story is like one of those stories that are just too big to tell. There's too many working parts and there's too many people with dirty hands and there's too many dirty secrets. And right. I think if one thing came out, it would cause a chain reaction and a bunch of people would have a lot of explaining to do. And they would be scrambling to do damage control. I mean, look at the stuff they've done for the past two years, nonstop. Nonstop. And, and yeah, at the same time, I mean, look at how few of us there were, that so few who were standing up saying, wait a minute, this is not okay to be spraying your child in the face like this. You know, I mean, people were talking about it, but they were doing it privately, right? So since when is child abuse applauded? Since when is it applauded to be a controlling? Since the internet, probably, because for some odd reason, it's okay for adults to exploit their children on these platforms to pedophiles and God knows what else, you know? Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and the other part of it, you know, they're talking all the time about how they want a law, evidently, so that everyone has to be, you know, it has to be legislated that we're supposed to believe that Christopher Watt's wife was some superhuman or something. You know, um, it'll be forced on us, I guess, to say, yes, Master, we do believe that she was perfect. What we need is a law. Buy it. They're hope. They're, I think there's more people who don't pay attention and don't look at, don't look at the fine details, and they're just expecting those people to buy it. And luckily, the, there's been people who haven't kept their mouth shut and have kept the ball up in the air. Exactly. And exactly. and hopefully, you know, with all these people keeping all these secrets, somebody will spill the beans. Well, and come forward and say, "Hey, look at I'm the one who called you and told you X Y Z, and here's proof of this." You know. Um, well, that's why you just need to keep chirping away, keep chirping away so that yeah. they keep spending their money, hiring idiots to attack people online until they go broke. Well, and here's the other thing. Well, I don't even care if they go broke or not. I don't even care. I'm so through. I am done with all the bullshit comments. I read like three words and I delete them. I just think, you know what? Get out of here with that crap. It's all the same, the same misspelled words, too. I absolutely. That's why it shouldn't even get to you. You know, you should just ignore yeah. it and just keep just keep going even, forward. Keep going I forward. I don't even believe there are hundreds of people. I think there are, you know, I said the number 38 a long time ago. I think there are 38 people behind the whole thing. I don't believe all the fake profiles. I don't believe it because all those comments are the same. But what I want to say is this. Instead of saying that they're going to get some law, whatever, right? What we need, if we're going to have a new law, we need to have a law that restricts parents from using their children as props for MLMs. Because that, well, for anything, they shouldn't even be able to use their children as props on YouTube. Do they? Do people even realize what they're opening their families up to? Well, by having, by having it where they're, I know on I saw what media. You shouldn't use your kids. Period. You know what I mean? Well, and and to do it to try to promote some you know, fantasy that they're going to make five pennies. Garbage and, supplements. You know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's like, and, and again, in what world is any of that okay? You know, remember when Bella was hungry and she wanted a bite and she was like begging for a bite and she's like, oh, you want a laptop? She wasn't even hearing her own child because she cared about the stupid MLM. She was overly excited about the new cake bite. <laughs> oh, which is like that a sign of like mania you know when you get overly excited about things what's that a sign of like well, extremely overly excited like glary eyed like sparkly eyed excited over well, the stupidest thing right there's the two phases the manic and the depressive yeah. so the, that would be the manic and i do think that she made her videos during her manic phase and I think when she was in the depressive phase, I think she pretty much stayed in bed all day. I do. Well, there was, there was a few videos I seen where she was in a depressed state and you can tell her face is like, the look Black. on her face is completely different. She looked like empty kind of. Yeah, like she had a flat affect almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a couple of them like that too. 
But even like, if you look at the Wacka Daddy video, she's she's sitting there literally enjoying making Bella cry. You know, Bella was hiding under the chair. She was Not running. Bella, she was doing it with her mother. Her mother was um, partaking in that game too. And they were both going at the kids and going at Chris. Remember? She right. was in the background cackling away. Well, and and that entire scene to me, you know, I said it not that long ago. If there wasn't an open CPS case, then why the hell not? You know, if you have a video online showing the mother antagonizing the child until she starts crying, it, it's disgusting to me. Well, maybe, and like, maybe the only three people that were watching her just happened to not catch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> They were probably bu busy filling out their MLM envelopes for free trial. Uh, I was, I was she, curious about something. Cindy Watts told me that when she went out there the end of January for, I think it was January 2017, for them to go on that five-day vacation, Shanann told Cindy to keep the kids away from her parents. That's what Cindy Watts told me. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Okay, so Cindy was basically put in the middle because she's the one who was physically there. Well, Shanann was off on vacation and while her mother was calling her nonstop, complaining about it, right? And then finally- That was Shanann when she pit them against each other, I think. I think she pit them against each other at that point. She was playing both of them because remember she said to her mom complained to her about it and she's like, oh, I'll say something to her. But then she was telling Cindy something completely different. Right. She told her mom that she would take care of it when she got home. And then, well, she's telling Cindy to keep the kids away from her parents. Okay? Right. So then Cindy's big crime, evidently, according to that letter that um, Christopher Watts' mother-in-law wrote for the investigator, Cindy's big crime was speaking up and saying, then why am I here? And, you know, it's a good question. Like, if I'm going to fly all the way to Colorado, take time off work, Cindy had like bronchial pneumonia or something at that point too. She was very sick. Well, all so, the stuff that Sandy's claimed has always been like nothing. You know, all the things that she complains about aren't really a big deal. She turns them into a big deal and convinces people that they're a big deal, but they're really not. But the shitty things that they do, they convince people that it's normal. Everything is backwards with these people. Everything okay. is backwards. And get this. So Cindy told me that when Chris and Shanann came back that Shanann and her mother got in a really bad fight and that Shanann basically booted her out and told her dad, don't leave. We want you to stay. And then Shanann, according to Cindy, told her father to divorce her mother and not to leave with her. Well, that okay. pissed Sandy off. No wonder so, Sandy doesn't like Cindy. So in Sandy's letter to the detective, She's saying how that was it. The the big crime that Cindy committed was to say, why was why am I here then, right? But and then she said she never spoke to Cindy again. That was it. She was done with it, right? But if you look at it, if Cindy witnessed a big fight between Shanann and her mother, and then her mother never spoke to Cindy again, maybe it was from embarrassment, maybe it was from anger, maybe she was mad because Shanann Nobody wants to deal with the Rusex. I don't think anybody wanted to deal with Shanann or the Rusex. And I think that's why Chris got ran over the way that he did. And he's probably afraid of them. Look at the stuff that they do. They go after people. They go after people on social media. They they are down people's throats, like constantly. So if, if there was some kind of cover up or something going on or people didn't want nobody to talk, the Rusex would have the upper hand with it because they're the ones that are going to react right away and do things and do things in their favor. I think, so he was afraid of them. I think he was afraid of them. And I think he was afraid that something would have even happened to his family if the truth okay. about stuff did come out. Okay, so think about this. So she moved out. Chris Frott's mother-in-law and father-in-law moved out. It was either the last week in January or the first week in February of 2017. They were there 16 months, okay, living in the basement. They moved out. And then when did she ever see them again before July of 2018? Um, you know what? I There was a video, 
And the video shows Bella introducing Cece to Sandy. Do you remember that? And Cece had to be about two years old. So that means that that whole time, from probably the time that she got kicked out of the house by Shanann, she probably hadn't been back there to see them kids. So if that's the case, then why the hell are people complaining saying Cindy wasn't involved with their lives? Because they don't know the truth. Because they're getting told a bunch of garbage from the other side, from the fucking Shiner camp. Excuse my language. And you know how they're, how they're saying how Jamie never went to Colorado? I think that was in the letter, too, that Jamie never went to Colorado. Well, okay, if you look at the time frame. Well, fact, they could have said that so that the police didn't ask Jamie anything because the police would have looked at Jamie like, well, she doesn't even associate with these people. She's never even been here. Why would we question her? I think that was all to keep the questioning on the people that they wanted to be questioned, who they had control over, because they didn't exactly. want the watch questioned. Exactly. They didn't want Cindy to be talking to the police and telling the police about how her daughter-in-law went whack job about the nut thing. So they were like discounting Cindy right off the bat. And, and that's they why they had to bring up the nut situation first. That's how it is. People who lie, they'll come up with the story and spit it out first. You know, the people that they're victimizing, they'll come out and spit out the lie first. And then it's up to you to challenge the lie. And when you have people like the Watts, you know, they don't right. challenge the, right. the BS. You know, they want to be better than that. But you can't, you can't, in that situation, you can't necessarily be the bigger person when you're dealing with people who will go so low to take you down. And, and here's the thing. Here we are. Here's the thing. Christopher Watts' brother-in-law had never met Cece before July of 2018. Cece was three years old. So if he had never met Cece, that means he hadn't well, seen she Bella. wasn't going to bring them to North Carolina. How, I wonder how many times, was that the first time those kids were ever in North Carolina? I think so. Exactly. You know what I mean? So obviously she wasn't as close with her family as she claims. Exactly. Even if they were flying back and forth. What about the rest of her family out there? She just completely disconnects herself from everybody? And that's my whole question. If he had never met Cece until she was three years old, that means he didn't know Bella either because Bella would have been just a baby, right? No, he didn't know her at all. That was the <clears> first <throat> time, the first time he had interacted with them as like functioning little individuals. So, so think about it though. The police interviewed him. So, you know, why didn't they interview Jamie? Why didn't they interview Cindy? And like you said, because, because they, poisoned they, were, the well. they were directed, they were led. I'm telling you, that family led the investigators down the road that they wanted them to go down. They said, these are the people you should talk to. These are the people who she's close to. This person knows this. When you have the family telling you, you know, things, the cops don't, the cops don't think, okay, the parents are going to lie to me or misdirect me, right? They're going to trust the parents if their daughter's missing. So then all they go through all these motions and they're led down these roads. And then all they had to do the whole time was just make it real by having people that they know lie. Like, uh, Nicole Atkinson and the Tinder date and the guy with the lip injections. All these people just pop out of nowhere all of a sudden and they're all associated with the family, right? Well, we don't want to hear from anybody that actually like, knew them. And the people that we do hear from that knew them, they're labeled as crazies and um, jealous and all kinds of other stuff so that nobody listens to them, like the Lindstroms, remember? Yes. And you know what? I think the Lindstroms were the most honest of all. I do. And, I, and they I didn't. I think that guy could have said worse about Shanann, and he didn't. Exactly. And I think Cindy Watts could have said a lot worse, too. And I think, oh, yeah. I think I she's, the way she's being treated. I didn't understand what she said. I'm like, did I miss something? Did I miss one of these interviews? You know what I mean? At the time she was missing, I can understand why somebody would say the things that she said. She didn't go off the wall and say, oh, well, she deserved to die. It's all her fault. It's all Shanann's fault that she's dead. Blah, 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 blah. That's how it was treated. And then they even brought it on national television on Dr. Phil and talked shit about it. It was like, right. really? Right. Okay. Kylie Graham says the brother did stay in Colorado. And that's true because I remember there was something, he made a statement at one point saying he was done being her slave. That was in the beginning when she had first moved there. Oh, okay. That was when the brother was there. But then okay. when he when he went to... When he got locked up, that was when the parents did the bankruptcy, I think, probably because the bond was probably extremely expensive and he got locked up. And for the time he was locked up, they were living in Colorado. 
Okay, that would have been 2015 then? And then when he got, when he probably got out of jail, that's probably when one of the parents had to go back and stay with him because he's obviously needs some kind of care or supervision. So that would have been 2015 because I know also in that letter, Christopher Watts' mother-in-law said that she moved, they moved in with them because his wife had high risk pregnancies, right? But I oh, figured come yeah, on. I, I figured it out and the baby was already born. She wasn't even pregnant. And in the letter I, she I wrote that her she father, her father said that when she had the first baby that she was disappearing for weekends at a time and that him and Chris were watching the kid. That they got stuck watching the baby. It's all in his interview. Listen to that guy's interview like two or three times and go through with a fine tooth comb. And really listen to what he says. Maybe that's what you should do on one of these live streams. We should pick apart one of his interviews. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to play this stuff on it, though. But he did say that. He said that Shanann would disappear. She would just disappear and go out for the weekends. And then there was even pictures. I remember I found on her social media way back when, but it's been scrubbed. Around the time when she was pregnant, she was like out partying or not pregnant. It was right after her pregnancy. She was out partying and talking about how her how her husband was at home watching the kid. And it was a new baby. She had a flannel shirt on. I remember it. So this entire narrative that we've been spoon fed has all just been a bunch of bullshit. All of it. You know, this whole idea that that because she's dead, we're supposed to not discuss this case. You know what I think? I think a lot of people are hitting on things that they don't want talked about. So the, they'll just throw things out there and make the lies even worse. You know, it's just it's it's turning into this really nasty web of deceit and lies because they just keep adding on to it. Every time somebody calls them out on something, they come up with something that's I mean, it's most of the time, it's just ridiculous. And anybody with half a brain can see right through it. But I think that's what's happening. It goes from one thing to another, you know? Right, right. I agree. Pixie Doll says Cindy should come join the live. I think Cindy and Jamie and Ronnie should all come join the live because I have a few questions for Jamie. I'd like to find out what's going on with their circus. They're being taken advantage of is what's happening. They're, and somebody else is just going to make a bunch of money off of it. And they're just going to get stuck in the same position they were the whole time. And in the meantime, the lawyers who were lining up are like running for the hills. Right, because it looks a certain kind of way, even if it exactly. might not be. Exactly. Because that Kim, I she's... She's, well, she's been involved. She's, she's been involved folded. right from the start. Yeah, she's been involved, but she's not as involved as she claims. She's got enough to make it seem like she's more involved than she really oh, is. I don't know with the Watts. The Watts actually showed her the curb because Cindy told me that they did not trust her at all. They showed her the curb like a year and a half ago. Yeah, and but she's I probably mean, just using the stuff that she accumulated during the time when they did talk and pretending as if it's something now. Because she has nothing. And she hasn't even done enough research to prove that Chris killed Shanann. She doesn't even know the case it's, at all. It's garbage. Did she even look at the freaking autopsy report? I mean, she played it on her thing, but did she did she comprehend it? Did she even yeah. comprehend what she was saying? She even said there was no petechiae. There's so many things. Like, I mean, you can't strangle somebody just like one, two, three. It just doesn't work that way. And she also... Um, said that within two months she was filing a 35C and that was like three months ago that she said that. Yeah, um, right. Sign up for then, my Patreon. You know, when that one Lana or whoever, when she was doing the telephone thing, I thought, well, that's interesting, right? But I don't even think that's how it worked. I don't. I think there's something screwy with that whole presentation. I don't know. Ever since I saw I those to source their information and I think people need to look into things themselves instead of trusting all these people on the internet I'm sorry but this is an entertainment platform and people yeah. just want numbers if you really want to know what happened you're not gonna you're not gonna figure it out with people on 
somebody's channel who's got a Patreon and who does Chris Watts marathons every day. Like that's not going to happen. Right. These people are insane and it's just about making money. Well, I think there's like four or five, I would say, I would, I think I could identify like four channels, five channels, maybe that actually are presenting details of the case, but so many of the other ones, they're just, yeah, but I mean, is it worth it? I mean, is it worth it for half these people to do all the research and go through all the trouble to get this stuff out to people? And then their, their stuff gets discredited by liars and scammers and GoFundMe pay pigs. And then they get videos made about them and they get harassed and attacked. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the they're attacking anyway, though. They're attacking anyway. Like, oh, if, I know. You know, the, if they, um, and, and here's the thing, the truth always wins out. The truth will prevail. So, you know, I think it's worth it for the, for the point of saying, I'm not going to make excuses for a child abuser, period. You know, I'm going to go ahead and keep right on focusing on what poor little Bella and Cece had to live through because that matters. And right. also, also the whole thing of Chris being a battered male, he was a battered male. It's all yeah, society doesn't want to admit that because they want women taking everything from men. You know what I mean? Women right. are more uh, to the system. Women um, fighting with men is a good thing for the system. Because women will take a man's shit in a heartbeat if they can. Well, and that's what they want. they want to get rid of the alpha males in today's society. Well, I think what they're trying to do is to try to justify abuse and it's bullshit. It's abuse. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. If you're going to abuse your spouse, then it's abuse. And we're not going to make a, you know, we're not going to pretend it away. Right. I'm just looking at the thing. There was one asking if you had one question. I, I think people really like it when you hop up on the panel. <laughs> you you probably know more than anyone I've ever spoken with about this case. Yeah, and I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you must be in love with Christopher Watts. Yeah, I no, know, I'm, right? I'm no, jealous. I'm jealous of Shanann. I'm yeah, on the jealous, jealous of Shanann train. You're jealous. You know, That's it. Yep. You just had all that Ashley furniture and. <laughs> the repossessed dining room table. <laughs> Them crappy purses. One of the Sorry. first one of the first crappy text messages that I got from a North Carolina phone number was and I'm talking like September, October, I think it was September of 2018. And I can't remember, it might have been a private message or whatever it was, but I think it was a text message. And it said that um Christopher or it said Chris would not be attracted to you. You're not the type of woman he'd be attracted to. I'm thinking, you dumbass, I'm 60 years old. I would hope that a 33-year-old wouldn't be attracted to me. Right. <laughs> you dipshit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There was one wanting to know what question you would ask Christopher Watts. If you had one question to ask him, what would it be? Oh, <laughs> Why didn't he just call the freaking cops? Yeah, good question, right? Why didn't you dial 911? But you know mm -hmm. my theory. My, I know why he didn't. I know why he didn't. But I think if he answered that question, we'd all know the answer to the mystery. Exactly. We'd know why they ended up in them tanks. We'd know why she, how she died. We'd yep. know who killed those kids. Yep. Crystal Hillcroft asks, or Hillcroft asks, hi, I just have one question and no disrespect intended, but Miss Mensa, why don't you use Shanann's name? Well, Crystal, are you new to the case? Are you new to the discussion? You must be because you're spelling Shanann's name wrong. You know, if you did say her name, they would criticize you for saying her name. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, well, they, they, they did. Me. They threatened my life. They they seriously threatened my life if I said her so name again. For legal purposes, for legal purposes, we don't want to say the name. How about that? Well, no, I'm I'm like I'll say her name if I want to say her name, but it's just easier not to, especially when she has so many. You know, I could call her right. Veronica. Maybe they'd prefer I call her Veronica. I don't know. I could call her Nurse Nene. Nurse Nene, that's a good one. 
but Crystal, to answer your question, they threatened my life when I said her name. And then when the video came out showing her family singing Happy Birthday, Shannon, Miss Mensa with my big mouth, I said, wait, they're saying Shannon, not Shanann. And then the scumbag attacker said, you're making that up. You're lying. And then it turns out that Shannon was her name. So then I got a few threats about calling her Shannon. And then I started calling her Christopher Watts wife. And now they threaten me because I won't even say her name. But Crystal, seriously, if you're going to jump in and create a profile and, you know, do this little routine here, you should spell her name right. Because when we see that spelling, then we know that it's one of the pack. Just, just a heads up for you. I know I sound snarky, and you know what? I don't care. I can get snarkier. Miss Mensa, what is your guest's name, please? Honey Badger. Would you like her address and her real name? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Freudian slip. You can't win no matter what. Right. I'd like to say what I'd like to say. Without being harassed, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not new. <laughs> this is so true. Pixie Dow says they either say you're in love with Chris Ross or jealous of Shanann. That is so uh -huh. true. Or you're Cindy Watts. I've yep. been called Cindy Watts, like just like you know, writing, to, just talking to people, like in chats and stuff. And you want to be Cindy Watts, okay, Cindy Watts. <laughs> We I got know a message. Cindy Watts. I got a message one time saying that they just knew I was NK. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I got a funny comment the other day. They said that they just figured it out that I'm hypnotizing people with my videos. Oh, did you, maybe you took some pointers from armchair. <laughs> Isn't that what he does over there with his little cult? <laughs> He's like singing them love songs and shit. <laughs> Oh, look at Allison is here. Allison, you want to come up? And I, I should say this to the chat. Any of you who want to come up, just holler. Seriously. Allison says. So what's a good thing to talk about? Let's pick a topic. Does anybody have a topic about this that they want to talk about that we haven't already discussed? That's a Maybe good point. Does anybody yeah. have questions that might, we might be able to help answer? That's a good idea to, to go ahead and ask questions for the panel. Paula, if you want to jump up, feel free. I mean, anybody, when I say somebody's name and say, if you want to jump up, I'm, I'm extending the invitation to all of you. Come on, ladies, let's go. <laughs> Put your hot pants on. Oh, Hidden in Plain Sight says, no, she's NK. We can't be in cake because she is. Oh. Allison said maybe later. Okay, Allison, when you can. When you can, that'd be cool. Doing life my way says, no, you're not Cindy, honey badger. Because apparently I am. When I'm not, <laughs> okay, that is. <laughs> well, thank God I'm not the only one. Okay, Angelica has a question. Why is Chris still pretending? It scrolled. Hold on. Oh, that everything is perfect. I don't think he's pretending everything is perfect. I don't think we're really being told what's going on with Christopher Watts. I think we, we got YouTubers who want to make money telling us what's going on with Christopher Watts. I think Christopher Watts is scared. I think he's seen the the beast that's like, working around him and he probably doesn't know what to do or who to tell you know what i mean do you think that he's afraid i do and i don't think that i don't he maybe he doesn't have enough faith in his family you know because they're kind of pushovers and you know they're uh they're not like go-getter type people you know they're not like i don't know the word i want but i don't know i think if cindy knew more i think if cindy knew what happened with them kids, I think she'd fight for him. I think she'd help him. I think she'd probably get the fire in her to do something about it. 
But I think that I think that she's been convinced that that it's you know that his his first quote confession that he strangled her because she killed the kids. I think they believe that. So I don't think they know what they're fighting for because I think there's more to this case that that the the Watts have been led away from. I think that that a lot of the scrubbing of the Internet and a lot of the stuff is because they don't want the Watts in this stuff. Because something would trigger Cindy. Something would trigger her. If the right thing came across her desk, I think she would get triggered and she might do something. But she's passive. And I think it takes more than I think it takes more than just a little suggestive nudge to get her going. But I think he's scared. I think he's scared of the Rusex. I really do. I mean, look at what they've done to the public. Look at what they've done. Do you think they're not above doing it to him? Especially if it's if they have something to lose or they look bad or you know what I mean? Like if especially if they've gone on with something and covered something up, then they're they're gonna have to keep covering it up. I don't think they spent two years doing this to have their their stuff put on front street. I think Chris so, has been kept isolated. I don't think he knows what's going on. He even so he, asked that so he couldn't saying, believe that people thought he killed his kids. W what is that? How did he, why does he, why is he sitting in jail and confused that the public thinks he killed his kids? Was he not in court that day? Was he mentally checked out? You know what I mean? Like, right. is there, was there a backdoor deal done? Are, you know, does he even know what he's in jail for? I mean, he's in Dodge Correctional, which is sketchy anyways. I mean, anybody can look into Dodge Correctional, the type of people that go there. Chris Watts doesn't fit the profile of somebody who would end up in Dodge Correctional Facility. So the fact that he's there speaks volumes. For one, they probably didn't want him to die in Colorado because if the truth did come out, then the blood would be on their hands. And for two, if this has anything to do with some kind of cover-up that's a little bit higher up in some agency or something or CPS or a court system or whatever then then it, it would make sense that he would go somewhere to like dodge correctional anybody want to do some research on that that'll blow your mind go go look at the type of people that are in dodge correctional so the bottom line is he might be afraid of what might happen to his family if he does tell the truth it could be it could be Jane Landis says video was about the red truck. Hold on. There was a different message here. Jane Landis says, hi guys, just watched video earlier today posted by Straight Up Facts. I think that's the name of the page. It's, it's um, set the record straight and his channel is called Straight Up Blowing Minds. I haven't seen that at all. I don't think he's posted for everything about the case that you need to know is on his channel. It says video was about the red truck the morning of the tragedy. Have you seen it? What's your theory? Seems to be one of the only theories that would make. Any I agree with it 100%. I agree that that red truck was there. I think that Frank was there driving that red truck around and it was kept in the garage. And that's why that's the real reason why uh, Chris's truck wasn't in the driveway or in the garage. It wasn't because of an oil stain. It was probably because the dad's truck was parked in there all the time. You notice there was nothing in that space in the garage, even though they did keep it tidy, there was absolutely nothing on the other side of that garage. So right, right. I guarantee there's a red truck pulling out of there. It's a red truck. You can see the cab of the truck and the back tail lights and everything pulling out of there. And they get their panties in a bunch. When you talk about that, they go wild when you talk about it. So. I think that they took the bodies out of the house and put them in that truck. And that's what transported the bodies. And I think Chris was supposed to look like the decoy in front of the cameras. And he left shortly after, probably met him at the job site because he would have had to keep his route. If they were all planning together, like if they all decided to hide the evidence together and make it look like a disappearance or whatever, just get rid of the bodies. They would have told him, go about your usual day. Or they would have just made sense. Go about your usual day. Don't stray from the path because then it's going to look like you did something. Keep keep talking. I think, that's how they got him out. I think they got him out through the basement window. That was another video that that guy did 
with the basement window on the side of the house. And then I noticed they were coming there and they were trolling his channel saying, oh, well, that's the neighbor's yard. That's the, doesn't matter whose yard it is. There's enough there's enough yard there for them to back that truck right up to the gate, whosever gate it was. And they could have easily pulled the bodies out that window and just hoisted them up onto the back of the truck. How hard could that have been? And it I was just, out of view of the camera for the most part, anyways, because you've I seen. Just, I just found the link to the channel for, for set the record straight. I just put it in the in the chat thing so you guys can check it out. I actually think that if you would watch, especially if you're new to this, you know, discussing this case after watching the Frank Netflix. Frank the red truck. And I think it was Frankie Jr.'s old truck, which is why he got the new yellow truck that he crashed after months after getting it. He crashed it in, I think it was December of 2018 and he was supposed to go to new orleans with molly go lightly in 2019 and he couldn't drive his truck because it was messed up and that's why he didn't end up going when they had that whole gofundme scam thing they had going on over there when go lightly was raising money for them right and that's when go lightly did a, i watched a video that go lightly did and remember she, she was that weekend <laughs> She was one of the first people to attack me with that crap, right? I wasn't even on YouTube yet, and Golightly was like, either yeah, hiring she was or whatever. With Sandy. She had Sandy in her ear, and Sandy yeah. was sending her scripts so she could make videos. And I'm sure exactly. Sandy, I've seen text messages that were passed between the two of them, and Sandy was like, oh, well, you can make it up to me. Us Italians stick together. Well, I watched that one video where Golightly was saying how. Sandy was telling her exactly what to say, like about how she was successful and stuff like that. And the talking. Okay, wait a minute, hold on. The family didn't kill Shanann. Okay. I think that Shanann killed herself, killed the kids and then killed herself and was found that way in the morning by everybody who went to bed that night. Frank probably went to bed, uh, or they could have gotten to a fight when they got home. All this stuff could have happened. That's how they could have gotten time to clean it up and get out of there in the morning. I think that they covered it up because there was an insurance policy. And if you have an insurance policy and certain things aren't disclosed when the, when the insurance policy was taken out, like maybe her mental health or drug problems or any other kind of stuff that would breach the contract, I think that because of the way that she killed the ki the children the way that she killed herself, the fact that she probably had drugs and alcohol in her system, that they wouldn't have got that insurance payout. So I think that because Chris didn't call the police and the father was there to say, oh, my God, what do we do? I think that they said, you know what, let's just make this look like a disappearance. Let's go hide the bodies and say she went missing. And I think with her mental health, they might have already thought, OK, she's a risk. You know what I mean? And I think at some point after they did all this and they went and dumped the bodies and they contacted the police and they started doing whatever to lead the investigation or to lead the investigators in wh whichever direction, I think the parents turned on Chris because I don't think that they trusted him to be able to lie or not tell the police what happened. I think that they were afraid that if the police talked to him, that the police would have got it out of him what happened. So I think that they turned on him before the police could actually get him in there for questioning properly. Because Chris kept saying that they that they were turning on him. That they're remember? watching me. They're listening to me. They're going to set me up. I don't want to stick up for Shanann. He said a lot of things. And then I think that he thought, okay, maybe I can get out from under this somehow by saying that I strangled her because she killed the kids. I think in his mind, maybe he thought a crime of passion might have been a little bit better. But I think because of what the family was telling him and the fact that Nicole Atkinson was saying, yeah, if he did something to her, he probably strangled her while she was missing. I think the police said this guy probably killed his wife and his kids. And if he's admitted to killing the wife, then he probably killed the kids and he probably just wants to run off with the girlfriend because he the investigators were being led by these people. They were feeding the investigators lies. There was all these anonymous people um, fi filing reports with the police, asking questions, psychics saying that they knew where the bodies were and mentioning this and putting things in the cops' heads. That's how the cops found the, uh, whatchamacallit, his app, that secret calculator app. Somebody made a report 
while while she was still missing, they said that they were what I think they said that they were a wife of an employee at Anna Darko and that there was a slutty war woman that worked at Anna Darko. And the way that she would get away with cheating on her husband was by using this calculator app. And they suggested to the police to use the see if he had the calculator app. So they were feeding the cops this information. And if you look at the cops report later on, the cops said, oh, yeah, I went on my own hunch and just checked to see if he might have had a calculator app. Bullshit. Somebody planted that in your brain two days into the disappearance, the second day of the disappearance. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But yeah. Hello? I'm here. Sorry about that. <laughs> like what's happening? You were doing so so well. I just I, I, I start to get worked up because this just drives me crazy. Because I can see it. I can see exactly what happened. It makes so much sense. If you just piece these things together, and then you take all these other things that were going on at the time, and who said what and what was said, it's it's what. It's almost like we're looking at the details that they want us to focus on and we're not paying attention to all these other little fine details that speak volumes about everything else. I'm listening. I'm just opening up my bag of salad. <laughs> so it says drop the link. Um, yes, Sandy did mention oil while Shanann was still missing. Sandy said she believed he, pour he poured oil over them. Sandy knew everything. And so did so did Nicole Atkinson and so did the neighbor and so did the son. They were like real detectives. They just happened to catch everything, you know, in real time. They just knew everything and they're curious and we're suspicious. They were suspicious when she was just missing. They were feeding the police garbage. They were lying to the police. Like, I'm surprised people haven't seen all this stuff. Like, you can just watch and be like, wait a minute. That's not how that went. Wait a minute. Why are they telling him that? What is, you know what I mean? What do you think about the whole diabetes lie, too? It's bullshit. There was just a way for them to rush to get into the house because they were trying to get in there before Chris got back because they wanted to pin it on Chris. And the scene wasn't cleaned up yet. So they knew that they had to get in there before he came back if they were going to pin it on him. And if you look at Chris, it, him and Nicole got a look to him. Like, he's almost looking at her like, you're. why are you giving it away? You know what I mean? Like, why are you saying something? I'm fine. I'm fine. I can handle this. And then he tries to, like, he tries to stay in that persona. He tries to be a good actor and pretend like nothing's wrong. Because I think he was trying to appease the family so that they, so that they would believe that he would be able to go through with it. Because they were probably paranoid he wasn't going to be able to lie to the police. And I think he put on his best performance and they were like, fuck him. Let's turn on him because this idiot will talk. Chris is not a good liar. He's a terrible liar. Well, he was the perfect patsy too. Exactly. I mean, he was a perfect patsy for eight years already. Remember when Princess Diana said that there were too many people in her marriage? You might not remember that. Um, back in the day when when her husband was keeping his mistress you know she did an interview one time and she said there's too many people in her marriage i think in christopher watts marriage i think there were too many people you know i don't know anybody who calls their daughter every single night or their son-in-law not even their daughter their son-in-law every single night to check on the girls yeah Ooh. it's too much it's intrusive if there wasn't something wrong to where they needed to be there they were intrusive then then they were interfering in their marriage well, what were they checking on? You know, just screen. Why having your, you know, you're a new couple, you're a new family with new babies, and you got your parents moving in, and they got the problematic son, and all kinds of other stuff going on. You know what I mean? It's just like ridiculous. So there had to have been something to where they needed to be there. Well, and and seriously, who calls your son-in-law every single night to check on the girls? Unless I, there wasn't a reason. I think he was calling to see whether or not his daughter. Did anything I, don't think dangerous. He was calling. I think he was living there. I think maybe I think Sandy was the one who was probably calling. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I think he was living there. And then Nicole was hired to watch out for her when they weren't there. 
could have been or to go on the trips with her when they couldn't be there. F apparently, Frank had a delivery job while he was out there for like Home Depot or Menards or something. So he had like a small delivery job. So he probably, you know, worked a little bit. And then he was probably going back to North Carolina. He might have been going back and forth. That's probably how the truck got out there. He probably drove it because they did have the truck when they were in North Carolina for the six weeks. The truck was in North Carolina. And then how did Frank get back? How did Frank, Frank could have drove in a later time. He could have drove the truck back or the truck. You know what I mean? I think he was staying there. And I think if you look at, I'm telling you, look in the courtroom when Frank says that you carried my family out like trash. Chris has an emotion to like, he has a reaction to what he says. Like, like he couldn't believe that he said that. You know what I mean? Like, why? Like, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. If he killed somebody, anybody, it doesn't, it doesn't fit for him to be looking at Frank like that. It was almost like that was the moment when Frank had betrayed him. Because if you think like him and Frank were kind of similar, you know, they were basically the slaves of their old ladies. Right. So they probably had some kind of weird little relationship going where, you know, they were the house, the cabana boys. And I think at that moment, that was the moment where Frank had to turn on Chris. And I think Frank was upset by that. I think that was one of the reasons why he cried in court. Because Sandy and Frank didn't cry in court. Frank Jr., only Frank did. Well, and the whole thing about how he saw a video saying that he saw the which video of him lie, carrying right? them out. Which was a lie. And it was then a lie. Because supposedly he was the, the job. Right. Then the story got changed after... After set the record straight, did those videos, then all of a sudden the story changed. Yeah, I remember that. Allison is here on the panel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute so that you guys can talk and I'll eat my salad. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You can talk to her. Go ahead. It's Allison, all good. <clears throat> Allison, you were talking in the comment thread about a different kind of lupus or something? Yeah, there is a type of lupus that actually affects the brain and brain stem. And it causes psychosis. And um, the only thing that I don't see as being possible with that is that um, there would have been evidence on an autopsy. But I have questions about the whole autopsy thing. We don't see any evidence of scars on her um, from the surgery or anything like that. No evidence of. of There's portions you know, of the autopsy the girls. missing from the discovery report. Right. How do we even know that that was Shanann and the girls? There's a lot that points that it wasn't. Mm, I don't agree with that. I've done enough research to know that. They're not alive anymore. Okay. I mean, I thought about it, trust me, because I, you know, I've racked my brain so many times and looked at every angle. And it always, I'm sorry to say it, but it always leads back to Shanann. And she is alive. And that's another reason that I, it's hard for me to deal with all this online stuff is all the PSYOP stuff and the conspiracy stuff. And the answer is so simple. It's like right in front of everybody's faces and they just can't see it. Like it's right there. It's it. even in the discovery report. You just got to look. You have to piece the thing together. But she's, yeah, they're dead. They're dead. But I think that there were things, I think that they, um, there was a, Mensa, didn't they hire a special coroner to come in that didn't even work there? They had one of their people come in. He was like a, some kind of specialist that actually did her autopsy report. And they had done the testing on her spleen or the alcohol testing that they were supposed to do. They should have done through her eye. Or, or, or her, it was either her eye or her spleen. They did the opposite purposely because the one, the one test that they chose to do show shows a lower reading. So they actually had a specialist come in to smudge that autopsy report, like one of their own paid specialists. And so do you guys, I, do you guys I do remember that one of the investigators or the district attorney or somebody had pull and kept certain things out of there? Do you guys remember? How the autopsy said no scars, but then it also said she had the hardware in her neck. Right. And you also know that somebody that I don't I don't know who released that discovery online, but 
the cops didn't redact anything from it. Okay. If you notice, there was nothing redacted from it. When they put information out publicly, they redact information. That means that somebody leaked that discovery report, which means that there could have been things changed by the person who leaked the report. That's how dirty this stuff is. You guys get what I mean? You follow me? Yeah, I'm just eating my salad. Um, did you just say that she's alive? It sounded like you said she's alive. Me? Yeah. No, no I didn't say she's alive. alive. She, no, I don't believe that for one second. Why do you think that the, the grave site is being guarded? <laughs> I think that's the family being weirdos. I think they're paranoid. I think they're afraid somebody might try digging her up to see if she, <laughs> what really happened there. Who knows? I think they're just that paranoid. I really do. I think that they want their finger on the pulse of everything because I think they're involved with covering up what she did. There's a lot of money involved. And like I said, there's a lot of people who could have got in a lot of trouble if, if what we think is true. You know, why all these people are going to lose their oh, jobs. I agree. Over there's a big cover up. Watts. You know what I mean? They're all going to turn on Chris Watts and throw him in prison. It's like, you know, you, you kill one to, sp to spare many. You know what I mean? You slaughter one to spare many. And that's what they did with Chris Watts. Because he's an idiot. I'm sorry to say he's an idiot. Well, I think, you know, my opinion is that he was a battered male. Right, so right. It, but it makes perfect sense that they could have used him in that way because he would have been blaming himself. He's probably still blaming himself. Oh, yeah, because definitely. And and he would they would have made him feel guilty. You know what I mean? They would have made him feel guilty. And and he would be feeling even after her death, he would still be feeling like she's totally in control of him. I mean, he needs I think he needs a psychologist. He needs to be able to spend time unraveling the eight years and then also the trauma. He'll let it out. I, I, like I said, I think a lot of things are being kept from him. Just, I mean, they didn't allow newspapers, any type of, um, any type of uh, news broadcasting, anything related to him. They kept from him for almost a year and a half. He couldn't see anything. They would make him leave the room. They would cut his articles that talked about his case out of the papers so he wasn't even seeing the stuff i think if he's seen stuff that that people were saying and saying about his family and saying you know saying that he poisoned Shanann and he was doing all this other shit i think that he might talk i think that something is going to eventually trigger him and he probably will start talking because he's going to get real tired of sitting in jail allison i have a question about the lupus thing yeah in my opinion, she was probably mentally ill long before. I think she was probably mentally ill in her teenage years because they said that they would take her to all these different doctors and she always had, she was always sick. And then they finally got a diagnosis of migraine headaches, right? Well, and think uh -huh. about the pills. If she was a pill popper taking pain meds and stuff, that stuff messes with your brain chemistry. It messes with your dopamine and your serotonin brings you on low levels you can have depression you go through withdrawals all kind of stuff if you're not taking the stuff properly or the way it's prescribed if you're taking them to get messed up then you're going to abuse them and she probably she could have just had highs and lows just from the medications that she was on especially long-term use and whatever and starting mm -hmm. at a young age and stuff so mm -hmm. so then if she did if she did develop that form of lupus possibly right I think she was probably already dealing with other conditions mentally. I mean, but that would have just been even more, you know, on top of it. Right. Oh yeah. To, oh, to yeah. And, and actually um, that form of lupus, well, any form of lupus can, can be drug induced, but if, if she did have this, it could have been because she had been on so many different pills for other mental illnesses. I didn't know that that could be drug induced. Yes. Lupus can be drug induced. So I don't know how old she was when they started taking her to the doctors, but if she was a child running from doctor to doctor, 
saying she was sick all the time. And well, and she, didn't her mother have her on a slew of pills too? Well, I think that's when she would have started taking pills was when, whenever they diagnosed her with migraine headaches, they probably put her on a prescription at that point. And, you know, who knows what's true, right? They could have diagnosed her with bipolar and we're just hearing a different version. Who knows? I don't know. I don't buy the lupus. I've known people with lupus and they didn't they didn't do half the things Shanann did. That's for sure. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't I don't know it in detail and the science behind it the way others do. But I just don't see it. I don't. And it doesn't her timeline. Uh, like we had talked about this the last time we were here. She never talked about it on any given day. Like, like it was bothering her. Like I went through years and years of it and she would talk about it, but she was never really affected by it. It was only when she was telling people that she had it. And then she would like give the list of little diagnosis. It's like the same thing. Like if you Google lupus, what is lupus? And Shanann would have that, that copy and paste. You know what I mean? Right. It just, it didn't seem right. And then all the things with her being out in the sun and the vacations and the tanning beds and all the other stuff, you'd, I wouldn't think that you would do that. I think that would, that would aggravate your body. Like, in why one, would you just aggravate your body? In one video, she said she referred to her health challenges as her previous health challenges. I thought that was interesting that she... I mean, that's kind of interesting that she would call any of it a, a previous. Well, wasn't she in remission toward the end there? Was it, what, wasn't she cured? Wasn't she trying to say that Thrive cured her or something? She told Cindy that she was cured, and she told yeah, she, an, another one of their friends, one of Chris. I remember that the Thrive people, there was controversy over her, like, posting something about it, and they had reprimanded her because they're not approved by the FDA, so she can't be saying that thrive as a cure for lupus right like allison right allison you were telling us about how the facebook groups don't allow people to be pushing those products on people exactly. and they shouldn't exactly so there could have can y'all hear me yep there, mm -hmm. so there could have been that that lupus t type that you're talking about allison that could have developed over a long time of taking whatever psych meds right yeah, it could have. And that would explain why she was able to be out in the sun and why, you know, she wasn't having issues with um, any of the stuff that those of us who have systematic lupus. And then um, what about have. Oxy? If you have so lupus, much. do they give you OxyContin? Like, isn't that kind yeah, of a strong will. drug for somebody with lupus? No, no. With lupus and fibro, you could get it. Okay. So, you know, and, and they've tried to put me on it. I just can't take it because I'm allergic. Um, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, they, they will give you pretty much any pills you want if you have lupus. No questions asked. Okay, I just posted this comment. Take a look at this. Drug-induced subacute cutaneous lupus something or other. Is that the one you're talking about, Allison? Uh, I can't see it, so oh, okay. my, my chat. It says S-C-L-E. So, it says it can be triggered by drugs such as something or other, something or other, something or other. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Um, I'll have to look up the name of the one, but there is, but there is the one that can be drug induced, and regular lupus, you know, systematic lupus can be um, drug induced. But the one that I specifically know of affects the brain, the emotions, and the brain stem. Okay. And it can be drug induced, but it causes psychosis. Okay, Crystal says I'm an RN and also have lupus. Not any lupus, not any lupus can be drug induced. What's that mean? Maybe only specific kinds of lupus can be drug induced. Not so, all. SLE can be. Okay, did you say S C L E? S L E. S L E. Okay. 
Because uh-huh. the last that one comment it said I think S C L E. Is that it? Yeah. That that's the uh, that's the uh, lupus of your skin where you have the rashes and oh all that okay. Kind of stuff. okay so you're talking about a different one then yeah mm-hmm. little mama. Little Mama says, that's another thing that always bothered me. How do you kill three people, clean up the crime scene, load up your truck, go to work, then come home when cops are there and house is perfectly clean? Exactly. Exactly. You guys know my theory. I think when he went to work that morning, he had no clue what was about to happen. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I know. Nobody does. (laughs) I'm the only person who believes that. Yeah, I kind of agree. Look at the discovery, Mensa. But one of the things that bothers me about the discovery is they said that that one sheet was missing, but then they found that sheet and the other sheet was missing. And and I mean, there, that's really confusing like five pages. Because there's a lot. There was what, like three different agencies that were reporting in that discovery report. So multiple cops, multiple investigators, some cops were in one room and they they would mark all the evidence and there would be things that were missed. Like all three would have the same summary report and then only two of them would get all the things in the room and the other two would be missing stuff. That's why people are confusing everybody because there's so many different reports where people, one cop might've given a summary and didn't miss anything where the other one did. So that's the problem with the discovery report is if you have to look at it, it like literally you need it in front of you because you might find something over here that might contradict something over here or you have three reports, you know, because one cop said she pulled in the driveway. One cop said she pulled it in the street. One cop said she did this. So a lot of them, uh, even the cops kind of summaries contradicted each other. And that, too, is another reason why I think that somebody somebody there was involved in something. Probably, it only would have been need to, it would have only been needed to be one person, like a Baumhofer type. To where he took over and then told people exactly what to do, because the cops, the 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 actual cops in the area, they pretty much did their job. Then then Bohmhover came in, took what they did, and then assigned their people. And then they had other agencies reporting this, that, and the other. So it's just a cluster f u c k of things going on, and that's why it's confusing. But if you look at everything, if you actually were to piece everything together, it makes sense. You can see what's right and what's wrong and who was doing what and what was being said. Because that's but what in the, the very uh, the first of like five pages, they're talking about the sheets on the bed and that they they had the flat sheet, but the fitted sheet was missing. And then the same one, I think, said um, just opposite that that the, the fitted that they had the the fitted sheet but not the flat sheet i mean it's ridiculous it, it, everything in there is so messed up and then then the autopsy reports really get me really they did a really bad job me. they did a bad job unfortunately and i don't think that everybody not everyone had the same information they weren't all being told the same thing like and literally people were being led in different directions you can actually see this in the discovery report if you pay attention to it and you can see that the family was leading them in certain directions. I don't know. I don't think that it was it was just the family that was leading them. And I don't think that no, it I wasn't think just for the an family, inve- but- for an investigation, you know, nobody should be comparing notes during the middle of an investigation. And the first they couldn't screw up was what I, there was a more was there was an anybody in that area. house. Chris should not have been in that house and neither should Nicole and her son when they walked in there to check on them. That cop should have went through and said, okay, they're not here. And then started the investigation. They should not have been in that house. Nicole was running around the whole house by herself. Nobody watching what she was doing. She's the one that comes up with the the purse. Her son comes up with the cell phone. I mean, come on. That's yeah, not but at an that point, it was just a missing person. So they were just doing it by protocol. It was just a missing person. They can't just go in Chris's house. It's Chris's house. That's why I think the family did what they did. That's why they were trying to get in that house. They were trying to get the police to get in that house before Chris got there. So the cop, I don't think that cop that got there knew exactly what was going on. I think somebody who sent him out there might have known more than he did. And I think the investigators that showed up hours later 
turn uh, turn the uh, investigation in a different direction. Because when you see Sandy get on the phone with Baumhofer, if you watch that, try to listen to what she's saying in his ear. And his face turns white. I don't know what the hell she said to that man, but his face turns white. And then once he gets investigation, once he's in charge of the investigation, everything takes a completely different turn. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just don't think that. Well, you want to know what I think? Let's say Shannon was suicidal, right? Let's say that Shannon was suicidal. And let's say that she had been going for a program in Weld County for people who uh, have suicidal tendencies or attempts or whatever. And you know who was running that that program in Weld County? It was Detective Baumhover. So let's say he was aware that she was suicidal. And let's say that she he was also aware that she had an open CPS case or something to that effect where she might be a danger to her children. Or maybe, you know, if she has some kind of mental problem, she might be a harm to herself or anybody around her. Right. And let's say he was familiar with her. And let's say that he was the one who should have been should have been helping her out, that he should have got a phone call and he didn't. And then she ends up dead. The kids end up dead. It's not technically on his his hands. Right. You got Sandy saying, my daughter, you know, you you left her in the house with the kids and she killed the kids. This is all your fault. I'm going to fucking sue the state every which way to Tuesday. And this guy's like, oh, great. I'm about to lose my job. And uh, the district attorney is going to be real pissed off at me because this, that, and the other. Like a million things could have happened. But somewhere along the line, Baumhofer got involved. Things started changing. And if you look at the discovery report and you look at the stuff that was going on, you can see it. You can see it. And you can see who's leading what and where. And the family, the family should have just led that investigation. They should have. Because that's what the cops did. The cops let them, the family, basically lead the investigation. No lie. You want to know what I think? And I know yeah. that nobody else on the planet agrees with me, but that's okay. I think when he left for work that morning, I think his wife had just said to him, and this is according to his mother, he supposedly told his mother that the last thing he remembers is her saying that he would never see the kids again and that she is going to make him pay. Baloney. He's okay. afraid of his mother. He's afraid of his mother knowing the truth because his mother told him she's going to ruin your life. And I don't think he had the heart to tell his mother, hey, yeah, we had an open CPS case on us. She was medically abusing the kids, blah, blah, blah. I bet you that would have broke his mother's heart. I think that he's that much of a pansy that he's going to take the truth to his grave because he can't bear to have his parents know what was really going on in that damn house. And the fact that he allowed it to happen. I think that somebody was sleeping downstairs. I think that they discovered that she had killed the kids and then killed herself. I think they called in the friend and they called in, um, I don't know who else. But your Mensa, you're forgetting. You're forgetting about the truck. He was in the truck with somebody. Somebody was with him. There were two shovels. There's a million things that says that Chris knew what happened. Well, what I, this is what I think. I think that whoever was sleeping in the basement called in somebody else to help. They brought the bodies out to the job site. And I think that's when Christopher Watts fell to his knees, vomited, defecated, whatever he did. I think he was in collapse mode while whoever was disposing of the bodies disposed of the bodies. Did they ever test that feces? I don't know. They should have. But that's what I think. And when the girls were not in daycare, I think that the daycare center called the police and or called the, the caseworker or whoever. And I think that somebody at the police department was notified that the girls were not at the daycare center. And I think that there was already action being taken to try to find out where the girls were. And I think that by the time Nicole called and- well, then, why would it, then why would he admit to killing her then? You know what I mean? If he didn't do anything, if he didn't do anything, why didn't he just then, why wouldn't, see, it doesn't make sense that way. It does make sense. If, if he's doing what he's told to do, by whoever came out to the job site saying, you need to just do what we're telling you to do, you know, whatever, right? He's no. collapsed. 
his the, the car the car leaves the car leaves with him basically the car leaves he's like walking out as the car leaves so i don't believe that for a second the red truck is leaving while he's like in the driveway so how are you going to tell me like he didn't see wonder why they were pulling off the gravel driveway he wouldn't have even questioned it or said anything to him well, he just maybe, left. maybe he was pulling off telling him he was going to go pick up his buddies or go to work or something no maybe, maybe i don't think so i don't you, think i don't think frank would have been able to do it by himself that's why i think that the friend was remember involved the video when her friend was in the red truck and how she kept looking at the rearview mirror and she looked like she was absolutely traumatized remember that i think they're all involved i think that's why he tried saying that that he did it i think that he thought he thought that they were going to turn on him anyways I think that he felt that the family was going to betray him anyways. So he just tried to say it was a crime of passion. I think that he thought that that might get him well, off. That's what I was going to tell you. I don't think he figured that out. I think that whoever brought the bodies to his job site told him that he would be able to get off. They'd stand behind him. No problem. All they, all he had to do was say that he did it after she did whatever. Okay. Because they wanted, would have wanted to have protected the whole suicide angle. Right. So he, he's probably like, okay, okay, figuring that they're going to have his back. What was the part? Remember, don't do the interview, do the interview. I think he was told not to do the interview. Yeah, Sandy, Sandy told him, she's like, I told him not to do that interview, but thank God he did. Well, and at the same time, it was the friend who set up the interview. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so she's telling him, don't do the interview. Well, her friend is setting up the interview. Okay. I mean. The whole thing is fishy as I'll get out. I think he knew because Sandy was telling him, she's like, you got to do something, Chris. You got to do something, Chris. We, this has got to end. She was telling him like he knew, like, like, you know, go and whatever. The way that they were talking to him and the things that they said, it's, a lot of it's in the discovery report about how she was acting toward him. And how she was pushing him and the cops told her, the cops said, don't be threatening him and don't be doing this and da, 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 da. Well, I think by the time the friend called the police, I think the police were already well aware uh, that Bella and Cece were missing and endangered. And here's another thing. They said that all three of them were endangered, missing. Why? Why would Christopher Watts' wife have been endangered? She was an adult. She would have been a voluntary missing, not endangered. You see what I mean? There, unless she had some sort of a mental condition, unless she had some sort of a suicidal, I, you know, whatever, she would not have been labeled an endangered missing unless she was a vulnerable adult. Okay. If she was just a voluntary missing, a, an adult who was missing, she would not have been labeled endangered. That is well, and they would have not, and they would have not asked where the knives were either. <laughs> they wouldn't ask about missing knives either. That yeah, that question was a big one. Check the knife drawer. But her friend was also the one who said she had went to the doctor's office that morning and asked them if she showed up to the appointment. She never stopped at that doctor's office. She Isn't that went a there? And she turned right around. And there's no way on earth that a doctor's office in 2018 is going to say, oh, let's check the records. Yes, of you don't disclose that information. Exactly. There's no way. That is not believable. And I'll tell you, I, I was a police dispatcher when I was younger. That phone call to the police department is not your typical phone call at all. The friend did all of the talking and she kept going and going and going. Okay, the official call was check the welfare of a pregnant well, woman. Maybe it was the agency. Maybe it was the agency that was dealing with Shanann that helped cover it up. Maybe they contacted the agency before anything. I think the police were aware of it before that phone call was made. I don't think the police were, but I think Baumholm and his team were. I do. Do you remember the police employee, a woman who said that when she got to work, she got a call about a missing woman and children? And yeah, then, but it doesn't mean that the that doesn't mean that they knew all collectively. Only one person would have had to know. Only one person would have listen, listen, had to hide shit. That that employee changed her story. She at first she said that it was right after she got to work in the morning yeah, and she I got to work that. usually. And then she changed her story and said it was like four hours later. 
So I, I think the police were well aware of the situation the moment that the daycare center contacted them to say that the girls weren't there. Well, somebody covered something You can't something have up. a cover-up with so many people involved. You no, can't. it's going to come out eventually. can't know what's happening. You know, at this right. point, it's what, two and a half years later? Somebody would have said something. And, you know... They, well, people have said that, something, yeah, though. People too, have said something. They're just afraid to lose their jobs. Well, I think that... <laughs> I think it's interesting <laughs> that at least two of the employees took an early retirement. And yeah, let's talk about that. And somebody how, was how, were they, how did they have PTSD when they never seen a crime scene, never seen a drop of blood, never seen any bodies? Really? I'm sure they deal with way worse stuff, but the Chris Watts case just broke them. These hardened detectives and FBI agents couldn't stand knowing about what happened to the children. Get out of here. Well, and I saw something the other, the other day where people were saying that a lot, lot of, oh, it was that Larry guy, I think. Remember that Larry guy from New York? I think it was him on a, on a live chat. I think it was him saying that a lot of people, he, that he knows people who worked for the department. And he was saying that a lot of people quit their jobs over what they saw with that case. And I don't mean anything about the bodies. It was what they saw because that Larry guy is going on and on how it's a big cover up. And he's saying that there were a lot of people in the department who quit over what they saw going on. I believe it. I, I mean, I don't understand why people have a hard time believing in cover ups and conspiracies and people who lie. They act like, you know, that you should just trust everything that comes out of you know, uh, an authority figure's mouth or the Rusex mouth for that. Like, do people really think that that people don't have ulterior motives or that people don't lie? Like, come on. Well, I think about the, the young hairstylist who all of a sudden quit her job and moved all in one oh, day. Oh, the one who won the lottery? Yeah, she claims she <laughs> won $20,000 with a lottery. And she's the one who had already come out and said that Christopher Watt's wife told her in July of 2018, that she was getting divorced and looking forward to being single again. And then she disappears. I remember that. I remember that. So, you know, it depends how deep the cover up is. It depends. You know, my you opinion. You know what? I think it's gotten messy because they've just had to cover it up as they went. This wasn't planned. It wouldn't have been a planned thing. They would have just had to just make do with what they had and cover it up as they went along. So well, just like every time somebody brings something up that like really irks them, you know, like when it's the truth and they get mad and then they change the narrative on everybody. Like those are the things that they're doing to indicate that there's something going on. There's something deeper there. Well, I think what happened is I think there was an open CPS case. I think that they were noticed up for that upcoming hearing, the ongoing family matter. And I think that Christopher Watt's wife knew that at that upcoming hearing that they were going to restrict her parental rights even further. I think that's a huge mistake, obviously, to notify somebody of an upcoming hearing. They should have removed the kids and then notified them of the upcoming hearing. And that's just my opinion. But with all the people who have contacted me with stuff, it's like that totally fits everything. Because if you look at the tragedy, like step back and look at it, Christopher Watts had absolutely nothing to lose in a divorce. Nothing. No. And she stood to lose everything. She stood to lose everything. Okay, wait a minute. I'm sorry, but you're contradicting yourself, Badger. You say you can't believe that people can't believe that a cover-up is possible, but then you discredit the case being a PSYOP. Uh, it's a psyop like do you really believe that do you really think a psyop would be running two years this long for what what's the end goal what's the end goal well i think i think there's a difference between the tragedy itself what and i'm the saying is, is is that can i what i'm saying is, is i don't understand how people have a hard time understanding these things like when they happen all the time like anybody who's interested in true crime watches true crime documentaries where cops are hiding evidence, throwing innocent people in jail, forcing people to um, flee to things that they, to crimes they didn't actually commit. 
Like that's actual conspiracy. I'm not talking about alien conspiracy and government psyops. If they were running a psyop, like this would have ran its course already. We would understand what the end game is. This isn't a psyop. This is a bunch of scumbags who are hiding some really messed up shit. That's what it is. And a lot of people stand to lose a lot of shit. There could be, some people could end up in jail. Some people can lose high positions of power. So what would they rather do? Would they rather go down for Chris Watts and Shanann Watts? You think they'd go down for the Rusex and allow themselves to get sued by the Rusex for millions of dollars? The Rusex could have made millions of dollars if they would have been interfered with this investigation. If they would have interfered and Shanann would have killed the kids and killed herself, the Rusex would be close to 100 hundred million dollars worth of lawsuits for the Rusex. And they're over here scraping for change up for GoFundMe accounts. There's something wrong there. Contradict myself. Well, and I think it's important to delineate between the tragedy itself. See, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think these people understand about these people that run these bullshit psyops to keep you people distracted from the truth and the things that actually go on in the country that you live in that you don't even know. That you could be living next door to murderers and psychos and all kinds of other shit. Excuse my language. Like Shanann's and Chris Watts, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. It's a it's an epidemic. It's not hard to believe that a mother would kill her children. Not in this day and age. People are so self-absorbed and they would rather be concerned about their own selves than taking care of their families and the well-being of their children. And they're being misled by all these movements and all this garbage and they're straying so far from reality people are off the wall and that's why these things are happening because they're trying to be something that they're not. Sorry. I didn't mean to get all rowdy on your uh, live stream. Mensa. I'm still eating my salad and I actually started laughing out loud. I I'm glad Megan I had it muted. Megan Jay's in it for money. That's all she's in it for. She's distract. She's the psyop. The truth is the people who are sitting here getting beat up trying to figure out what actually happened to those kids. No, but you people would rather listen to anal sex and, and uh, 666 and worshiping the devil with Nicole Kessinger's yoga group. Like, get out of here. It's ridiculous. The truth is so simple. Do you think that How many people kill each other over insurance money? Kids kill their parents for their inheritance. Men kill their wives, vice versa. Do you think the MK had anything to do with anything? No, I don't. And there's plenty of proof to prove that she didn't. It's a dead end. It's a dead end. She wasn't anywhere near there. And, and I'm surprised that people have a hard time understanding the whole cell phone thing. Everybody's got a cell phone. You don't understand how the towers work, how the pings work. Like everything can be tracked. If she had anything to do with it, the police would have loved to involve her, I'm sure. She would have been more sensational. They would have made the best movies and the best TV, made for TV bullshits with Chris and his evil lover who slaughtered his family. You don't think that would be a thing if they thought she was involved? In my Maybe opinion, that good enough theory to throw him away. In my opinion, that marriage was already over. Like, I think the marriage was over, like, in December of 2017. When she stopped making the house payments, I think that's when the marriage was already over. And I think she was going to try to make it where he couldn't afford to move out. Well, definitely May of 2019, for sure. Definitely that date. I can track it back to that, knowing for sure that from that point on, they weren't involved with each other on that level. But there was definitely things going on in late 2017. And then what year was it that she, well, I think she cut her throat. I think she had a, a fit and probably did it for attention because it looked like a self-inflicted wound, something superficial, like a cry for help or something or attention. 
And then all of a sudden, after she had the whole neck injury thing, they were taking her on vacations and all kind of road trips. And she had everybody watching her kids and shit. He had to have noticed things, you know, that were wrong for a while. He couldn't well, have missed it. And I think he did. And he was just trying to like, he was just trying to deal with it as best as he could. And he thought he can handle it. And he couldn't. On her Facebook profile, she posted that she was in Indiana in Indianapolis and she was she was supposedly at the hospital there and she was there for like a month or a month and a half in April of 2016. That was the Indiana, right? Yep. Was there something involved with roller skating? Yep. And Applebee's um I think it was, yeah, she went to the roller skating rink which I thought that's odd. But it wouldn't be odd if she was in some sort of a day treatment outpatient thing. I guess. You know, the, the Darlie Routier thing. You know, she had that cut on her neck. She had hesitation marks. She, because I think what she was going to do, I think that she was going to kill her, kill the kids and kill herself and let him go down for it. That's what I think. I think she was so pissed off at him for whatever was going on in that marriage. And that she thought, because she had said that if, that if she would have died, they would have thought he did it. I think that's really what she had intended for. And and you see the hesitation marks. If you look at Shanann's neck mark, that's it looks like somebody, like she did it for the shock value, but not necessarily to kill herself. Do you understand what I mean? Do you remember how she was ticketed to for running a red light when Bella was in the car? Yeah, I remember that. I don't know if maybe, I don't know, you know, running the red light. I heard there was an accident that she ran a SUV into a tree or something. Oh. That I heard that had happened at one point that she like wrecked a car really bad. Megan J said that she's never made one penny off of this case. But they lie so much about how those accidents happen. You don't really know. They got like four different stories for the whole neck injury thing. Well, yeah, I don't think she had surgery. Okay, I have questions about something. Okay. When uh, when Cindy um, was talking to Chris right before the confession deal came out and he signed the plea and everything, she t said in the very beginning of it, I have questions about this and I don't want you to plead guilty to something you didn't do. Have y'all seen that? Right. And his answer was that he decided to take responsibility for it. So he took responsibility. He never said he did it. Exactly. Exactly. And Cindy had so many questions and she said that she would ask him at another time. Well, if, if he had had any contact with his parents, he would have said, mom, I did it or mom, I didn't do it or dad, I did it or dad, I didn't do it, but he never said it. Well, I think he was afraid of disappointing his mom. I think his mom like looked at him like he was just an angel. And I don't, I think he tried to hide a lot of things from her because she wouldn't have liked the things that were going on between that marriage and with those kids. Well, Cindy, if, told I think if Cindy would have known she was abusing those kids. I think Cindy would have been a, uh, been a hair up her ass. Cindy told me that when she went into and was able to speak to him, that they told her, they told Ronnie too, that they were not allowed to talk about the case. And Cindy went ahead and talked about the case anyway. And that when she told him, don't plead guilty for something you didn't do. And he told her that he made his decision. He was going to take responsibility for it. That the lawyers jumped down Cindy's neck. And the female lawyer is what Cindy said. And used the F word and told her that she better not do that again or the visit was over. So Cindy wasn't allowed to ask him questions or to talk, talk to him about it. So the most they got out of him was he said he decided that he was going to go ahead and take responsibility for it, that he made his decision. He was going to take responsibility for it. Yeah. I think it got too big. And how was he going to explain himself out of it with everybody talking and saying what they were saying? He would have never got out from the allegations that they were starting to make on him and the way it was starting to look and the media calling him a murderer. 
He there was no way he was going to undo what had been done. Why? <clears throat> why were they even concerned about the death penalty too? That seems. Uh, I, think, I think that was just a way to freak him out, and he didn't know any better. There was a lot of things he should have known that he just didn't. That doesn't make sense. They would have even been concerned with the death penalty. That's why I said he's he's an idiot. I'm sorry. He's an idiot. Like they all have, they're, they're all responsible. All of them. Everybody failed somewhere in that situation. Both families, both families should have done more to help them out properly. They all failed and they're all guilty of something. Hate to say that, but it's true. Well, I think that <clears throat> that's part of how she kept him isolated, though. I do. You know, that's that's what abusers do. Yeah, but, you know, still, there's more to it. <clears throat> it goes Cindy, talk than that. Cindy talked about how she thought her son was afraid of her, of, of his wife. And she said she was afraid of her, too. So I think that she did a good job of making people around her too afraid to speak up. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's well, like that's why that's why we need to be more vocal these days. People need to speak up. If you see something, say something. Especially when there's kids involved. That's the part about this case that just really irks me is that so many people are so willing to look the other way. Yeah, they don't even talk about the kids. They don't talk about nothing. They don't want to talk about how the kids died and what really happened yeah. and who was doing what. And they yeah. don't talk about it. It's all about Shanann and how wonderful she was. Really? And I don't understand the whole thing of she can't defend herself. Are you kidding me? So it's okay to have 300 profiles attacking one person and, you know, coming up with all sorts of lies and bullshit, you know, I guess that one well, person justified because they're protecting her, their image or whatever, or they're covering something up. That's what I think it is. I think it's a cover up, there's no way they'd be lurking around this long if they didn't have a vested interest in covering things up. Cause every time they try some money scam, I mean, they've made a lot of money, but a lot of people have bombed you know, trying to exploit the Chris Watts case. A lot of people have bombed and that's because they're in the wrong. Like you don't mess with this type of stuff. There's bad juju, bad karma. Don't mess with it. They talk about how we have bad karma for talking about it. No, you've got it. You've got it completely wrong. Well, I think it's bad a karma for ignoring it. You know what I, mean? I think it's a ridiculous case for anyone to be talking about karma on because if they're going to start saying karma, 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 then what does that say about their idol? And I guess then what they're insinuating is this, that somehow Bella and Cece did something wrong, right? I mean, that's ridiculous. Those kids this are the will come out. It'll come out. It will. Those kids are the innocents. And it's going to be ugly. I feel bad for the people who are, you know, I feel bad for the people who are who are strung up in this. I really do because it's not going to be pretty for anybody involved. What do you mean? Just, you know, the mental aspect of it, the thing, you know, the stress of covering things up, knowing certain things, things eating at you, guilt, all kinds of stuff, concern, paranoia. Cause that's what these people are. They're paranoid. They're running around. Why are you talking about me? Who's talking about me? What are they saying? Send me a link. Like, really? You know what I mean? You know what that does to a person? It's going to drive somebody crazy. Bad things happen. Bad things happen when you put that stuff out into the world. Well, I wish the people who have contacted me would actually go ahead and go public with what they know. I do. Because, you know, contacting me doesn't do anyone any good. I mean, I'm glad that yeah, people... Maybe it's just not the right time. You know what I mean? Maybe it's not the right time. There's people who have who still work 
for these agencies that can't talk about it because they can't lose their job. Maybe it's a matter of time, you know? Unfortunately, that's how a lot of these things play out. It takes years for the, a lot of these cases to play out with people. Years. Right. And I understand their concern and, you know, some of them are afraid, but I do wish that they would feel safe enough to come forward with what they know. Isn't that right? When they'll get doxxed, their jobs called, their dogs murdered. You know what I mean? Well, like... They're, people are afraid. They're afraid. It's not the right time. It's not the right time. P the spell has to wear off that these, these people have cast it all over the place. That that feeling needs to wear off. People need to snap back into reality and realize what the hell they're looking at these days. And stop pretending like, you know, this shit doesn't go on and these people don't do things like this. Everybody needs to wake up. And it's, people aren't going to all wake up at the same time. That's for sure. I mean, there's stuff that, that, that we're talking about now that like I was looking into a year or two ago and people are just now talking about it. It's like, really? Like it's taking these people that long to get to this point? Like, well, shit. I, I think a lot of newer people are coming on too because a lot of people no, who are discussing- the old, even, the, uh, even the OGs. Well, they, <laughs> even the OGs are starting to uncover stuff that, you know, it's like, oh yeah, now they're admitting it, you know, after two years. A lot of the newer <laughs> channels, though, a lot of the newer channels will come on. Like, there's one in particular, I won't say the name. There's one in particular who says they'll only discuss the facts, you know? They'll, oh, only, yeah. they'll only discuss what's in Discovery. Otherwise, you're bashing whatever. It's no, like, but then if you start talking about what's in Discovery, then they yeah. accuse you of bashing Shanann. Exactly. You know, what they really should say is, Unless we agree with you, you're not allowed to speak. <laughs> exactly. If you're going to talk about what's in Discovery, I guess, since when did that Discovery document? A lot of these people don't know anything. They're just getting paid to make these videos. They're being paid to make them. Somebody's paying these people to make these videos. Every time somebody questions something that somebody, whoever's oh, covering recruiting. this shit up, every time something is said that they don't want said, a video pops up. It's the weirdest right. thing. Exactly. With an explanation. We've been asking the and question for two years, but now when we have an answer, all of a sudden you have an answer. Well, they they create videos. <laughs> um, the the one just recently who just started doing live chats. Oh, look, look at look at here's a here's a comment. Gable, NA Sun has nothing to do with this. Really? Really? Well, he knew an awful lot about what was going on that morning. An awful lot. And it was strange that. He had the cell phone and the cell phone before, before they found it in the couch was driving all over Denver. How is that possible if Shanann was dead? So he has something to do with something. He knows something. That's probably Nicole Atkinson. Shouldn't have had your son there, Nicole. Keep him at home. Don't bring him to work. That one channel who just, who just started doing live chats, he said that somebody contacted him and told him he should start doing live chats. It was that Kalea something. So they're they're actively trying to get yeah, people. Yeah, they're recruiting people. They're recruiting yeah. people. We'll help you build your channels. Oh, all you yeah. got to do is talk about the Chris Watts case. You'll get big numbers. And then and it, within talking about it, they have no clue what the hell they're talking about. It. They're like, two, did you see the ghost? Did you within see the two ghost? weeks. Within Within two weeks, he put up a freaking video that's titled, Miss Mensa is a Pathological Liar. Of course. Within two <laughs> weeks of getting recruited. Gee, I wonder where he gets his talking points, you know? Well, hey, who's, you know, if, if people had something to do with it, they have to deal with what they did. That's on them. And if somebody figures it out, that's on you. It's not on the person who figures it out. Susie is telling you to let me talk. I, it's okay, Susie. I was just eating my salad, so I kept going on mute. Go ahead, Melissa. <laughs> I'll shut my gap. Up. Well, I just, I think it's, I don't know. I think it's disgusting, actually, when, 
a grown man has to create a video that says Miss Mensa is a pathological liar. It's like, really? How can you be more obvious? You know, how can you be more obvious? Well, and if then, you notice, all the people who jump on board who are supposedly going to cover the case, all they end up doing is attacking other YouTubers. That's all they end up doing. Yep. They get into it. They have a couple little things that they talk about, the little facts. They back up Shanann. They give a little baloney. And then all of a sudden, they get wrapped up in the drama so that they don't have to spit the facts. Exactly. I mean, there are people that d didn't know shit that would have like six, seven hour live streams about this case that knew absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing. Like, talk about a waste of life. Well, they even the circus, the circus that came to town, they don't know the case at all. All they know oh, is what God. they... This case has brought out the strangest people I have ever seen in my life. Like, the personalities that have come out of this case, crazies. Most of them are just straight up crazies. I've never seen a group of crazier people in my life. <laughs> like, is this what her name conjures up? Is that what Shanann conjures? crazies <laughs> <laughs> belly dancers and prostitutes and oh the belly mm -hmm. dancer was here earlier Psychics and you mean the kitchen belly dancer yeah yeah, yeah she, was, <laughs> she was here earlier i didn't tell oh, her no. oh, oh boy and then remember the lady with the gun remember the lady that laid in the bed with the gun who lied about having cancer remember that one lady a yeah, Mrs. Analyzer, I think. Yeah, all this stuff. Like, all these weird people have just been, like, in this case. Like, every scammer on the planet, like, got involved in the Chris Watts case. Do you remember, like, the, do you remember the nurse? She said she was a nurse, and she had a little table next to her. Yeah, and yeah was, with the pills. Yeah, with the pill bottles. <laughs> I do remember that. That was really early on. That was, like, yeah. so early on. It was one of the first ones. It was Molly Golightly. Um... The pink, remember pink, the one who's like, I need a new computer. Yeah, yeah, pink comes on board I and she's like, donations, but I could use a new computer. The very first live that she did when I went in there, she blocked me. <laughs> That's how I knew she was involved. And then, say, um, remember, say, they're talking about the ponytail and the red truck, huh? Oh, Mary Marlowe, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just like shouting things out. I'm like, I'm catching chat. And then, yeah, Mary Marlowe, Nurse Tara just brought up Mary Marlowe. We were talking about her last time. She was a who, wasn't she? Oh, she was and terrible. There. there was more. There was more. Oh, the, um, the psychic. Remember the drunk? The psychic. And then remember there was that guy who was doing the armchair impressions and he was like scamming women for money. He was like having like little online affairs with them. And then they all ganged up on him and busted him by sending his dick pics out. <laughs> what was his name? Something Bronson. <laughs> Do you remember that one um, who had, I can't remember, he would do, he would put she a wig on. Had and her phone. A no, the son had her phone. He found it in the couch. He went straight upstairs and found that phone. And another thing was her phone was technic was turned off when it was roaming in Denver in the car. Her phone was turned off or, or I think it was, it was either turned on or turned off. One of them was the opposites. So when they found the phone and it was turned off, it should have been turned on. Because, yeah, okay, that's what it was. The phone was turned on when she was driving, when Nicole and her son probably had the phone in, her, in their car. And it was cruising around Denver, going to doctor's appointments and all these places it wasn't supposed to be going. And when they got to the house, the son, Nicole, went into the kitchen. Chris went into the garage and the son went upstairs. And then as soon as the cop and everybody gets upstairs, the son pulls the phone out of the couch. It's on the body cam footage. There's no way. There's no way that phone was driving around Denver if it was sitting in the couch. That's not how the pings work. And they were in that house. They were in that house before the cops came there. They lied. They were in that house. And they were looking for stuff. Why did, why did, uh, why did NK or NA, I'm sorry, Nicole Atkinson, why didn't she go, why did she go straight for Shanann's purse? Why would you go straight to her purse in the kitchen? How did she know her purse was even in the kitchen? Well, what was she looking for? Why didn't she go upstairs where her friend was supposedly passed out on the floor from a diabetic shock? If you're afraid that your friend is passed out, you're not going to be. Oh, yeah. 
Daniel Look, Bishop. Run through the house without calling out her name. Somebody mentioned another crazy Daniel Bishop. Oh, hug your loved ones, friends. Get drunk in your garage and run around the street naked till you get arrested and hug your loved ones. He said that he removed those terrible videos. And then in his last live chat, people are going, I always laugh so hard when I see the Miss Mensa videos. Ha, ha, ha. And he grinned. He thought and it was That's why funny. he packed them up, because they had a lot of views. Yep. It ain't personal. He's trying to make money. Well, He's got to feed them disgusting. babies. It's absolutely disgusting. The people who were the most evil of all are, you know, save Robbie's the same thing. He's like, oh, I yeah, don't he's remember. A little fraud. He's a little he's fraud. Like, he's like, I don't remember. I don't remember. You know, like, really? You don't remember? He's only online every single day in everybody's drama. And I guess, I guess it's just routine in their lives to try to harm people. I guess that's just routine that they wouldn't remember. It's entertainment. It's for your it's, entertainment pleasure. It's evil. It's evil is what it is. Badger, no, she didn't. She found her purse in the office. You know what? Yeah, you're right. She she found it in the office and then brought it downstairs on the kitchen counter, and that's where she opened it. But she didn't that's go right, straight upstairs. She, was, she went into the kitchen first. Watch the body she cam was footage. Saying she went the, straight to the kitchen first. She was saying to the police officer that she walked by it first or something, but then she saw it in, in the office or they whatever. Were in that house. They were in that house. And she's probably the one who threw the uh, threw the glove on top of the refrigerator because I, I bet you any money, somebody went out the garage that morning, right? That refrigerator was on the way out to the garage. Somebody threw a, a blue rubber glove on top of the refrigerator. And it was a children's book, I think it was, that was up there. It was a children's book and a blue, blue freaking glove. And I bet you that Nicole and her son probably stayed there and cleaned up the mess. Nicole is trained in cleaning up hazmat after people like her elderly patients die and things of that nature. So she knows exactly how to clean the stuff up. And that house was scrubbed clean. They, the first thing they said when they walked in the house was they smelt cleaning products. They smelt bleach. That should have been a red flag right there. And there's no way he had enough time to do what was done in that house. Bedding was removed and ooh, replaced. Ooh, hold up. Megan J says, I think there's a fine line between having opinions and asking questions and accusing people of suicide and murder. I also would never attack someone for simply having an opinion, but good luck, Miss Mensa. You know what, Megan J? Seriously? Are you kidding me? Your opinion? Are you kidding me? Oh, wasn't she harassing you for having an opinion? It doesn't no. she talk shit about everybody else who has an opinion that doesn't buy into her psyop garbage? No, I don't think she was attacking me, but this comment does this comment doesn't fit with how she has been talking. At I'm all. confused. Who I am are you talking about. Well, she's saying I think there's a fine line between having opinions and asking questions and accusing people of suicide and murder. So what she's doing, evidently, is wanting to distance herself from Miss Mensa, of course. It's, you know, safer that way, I guess. So, oh, well. so because I have the opinion that I have about the case of Christopher Watts, it's okay. And then she says, I also would never attack someone for simply having an opinion. So... Because she doesn't like my opinion. Sounds like a sounds like a sounds like a hypocrite to me. It's no longer an opinion now. It's accusing people of suicide and murder. Well, based on the evidence, it's reasonable to believe that Shanann killed the kids and then killed herself. So that's well, my opinion. I think you just nobody, crossed, nobody here you has to agree with fine me. Line. But Megan J, I would invite you to come on up on the panel. She said that she didn't mean it in a rude way at all, Miss Mensa. Okay, why don't you come up on the panel and explain what you mean? Who? Which one is Megan here? Who's? Which one's Megan? 
It's think for yourself. That's Megan. That, that's Megan. She said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. Anytime you ever get on her chat and you ask her real questions, she just gets off her chat. When real people get on there and ask her real questions, all of a sudden she just disappears. Oh, I gotta go. I've been on for six hours, but now that you're asking me this, I gotta go all of a sudden. See, I, that's not my take on her. I think she's interesting. Yeah, well, speak for yourself. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, no, I do. I've watched plenty of videos on PSYOPs and government conspiracies. Good I luck do, with that. One. I think she's interesting. But she can be easily disproven. That's the point. She's easily disproven. So no offense, but like, I don't even think anything of her because I know that it's not a PSYOP. You know what I mean? If I know it's not a PSYOP, then Megan J doesn't interest me at all. She's just a whatever. You know what I mean? Sorry, Megan, but get some new content because it's going to dry up when you figure out that it's real and you've been looking like an idiot for the past year. I don't know if you're working with somebody or whatever you're doing, but Hey, you do you. It's your life. It's your name. Here's Angelica's comment. This is exactly where I'm at. <clears throat> Two little girls were not helped when they were alive. And that's exactly where I'm at. With all those videos out there, there was plenty of evidence. Like I've said, if CPS wasn't involved, then why the hell not? Megan's saying, I've never done a six hour live. Megan, get up here on the panel. She's not going to get up here. And you've done some pretty long live streams, okay? And you just repeat yourself. No offense. I just can't sit through it. Sorry, I'm an asshole. Whatever. Lady D says, why would Nicole... A, call the police then. I've never heard this theory, so I'm confused. Um, I think she would have called the police when she was told by the police to call the non-emergency number to request an officer being sent out to the house. Yeah, and there was another thing about... Uh... Nicole Atkinson's son was he he kept saying things that Chris Watts didn't say I don't remember what it was but he was telling the police officer when the cop first got there and he kept the kid was telling the police officer what Chris said and we had actually heard what Chris said and it wasn't what the kid was saying like he was adding things in there and trying to make it look like something that it wasn't. When if you paid attention to the body cam footage you'd clearly see that the kid was misleading the investigator like right off the bat and Lady, they were suspicious of chris right off the bat like Lady, they didn't think she was in danger they thought that she had been strangled and killed and thrown in a ditch somewhere that's that's where they were going with it lady d said that i missed the first part of her comment the first part says so if shanann committed suicide chris got rid of the bodies and then na and her son cleaned up the mess that's not what i think I think that other people got rid of the bodies and I think one of the parents was involved. I think the neighbor was involved. I think Nicole Atkinson and her son was involved. I think there was an investigator that had was tied to something with the courts or something previous with Shanann. Somebody did something. Somebody directed people in a completely different direction. And I'm not saying anybody killed Shanann or the kids. I'm saying she, I believe that she killed the kids and then herself. And they covered it up. And I think that at first it was going to look like a disappearance. And I think that they freaked out that Chris would have said something. And I think they turned on him. And the, and the investigators who probably were covering their own ass probably loved the fact that the the Rusex were leading the investigation because they didn't have to do shit. Diamond Girl says she believes N.A.'s son was very intuitive or he knew exactly what happened and was just telling the police what he wanted them to think.
says uh, somebody Shadan Delp says he does admit to killing her, but not the girls. Oh, for Pete's sake, are lied you multiple me? times. I'm sorry what? to interrupt you, but this is ridiculous. Please take my wrench away. I respect Megan. You know what? Cut the crap. Seriously, cut the crap. Everybody is welcome to come up on this panel. But this is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Evidently, Honey Badger said something that was offensive to Megan. Big flipping deal. Yeah, well, that's fine. I don't need any new friends. Not a biggie. Megan is invited to come up on the panel. She's I'm welcome to come up on the panel. Here, you know. I very I'm clearly, very clearly stated that I like Megan, that I have been finding her very interesting. And now Purple wants to say, take my wrench away. Because they're probably, like they're prob they probably infiltrated your chat, Mensa. Are you sure you didn't this, give your wrench to a troll? This or a is total <laughs> bullshit. This is the stuff that is so wrong about the case of Christopher Watts. Like, yeah, you don't need to up. pick sides, people. There are no sides. Stop grow picking up. sides. Honey Badger it's can not... have her opinion. It doesn't mean that it's my opinion. It do... And even if it was my opinion, so what? It isn't. But so what if it was? People Please act like there's winners and losers in this. There me? isn't. So now what are we going to do? Are we going to do five new videos on how Megan was offended in Miss Mensa's live chat? I mean, come on, you guys. Seriously. Yeah, stop being victims. Stop playing victims all the time. You women should be ashamed of yourself constantly with this garbage. Pull your pants up. Suck it up. You're all you victims. Guys, oh, I'm victim. Don't victimize me. Grow guys, up. Stop the high school crap. Seriously. Stop it. If Megan wants to come up on panel, she's welcome. I think it's interesting because they love listening to you, Honey Badger. They love listening to how fast you talk and how you know all the details and everything. But boy, oh boy, if you get a little bit, you know, harsh well, or whatever. They want to know what to use in their next videos. They're just getting pissed off because their names are coming up. They're just taking notes for their new shitty videos they're going to upload later. Well, the bottom line is they like listening to you because you're pretty harsh, you know. But then if you say something harsh that they don't like, then all of a sudden you're you're a meanie. Oh, purple butterflies telling me to shut the fuck up. Wow. There you go, purple. Have fun with Save Robbie. Right. That's okay. Let them go. Have fun, Let them go purple. spend all their money on all the wackos on YouTube. Purple isn't aware of all the emails I've received go, from people. Go buy into some that. GoFundMe scams. Some Not cancer skin and some dead and I said, no, that's fine. She can have a wrench. I'm okay with that. So it's not exactly a surprise. Yeah, I'm just too much for your chat, Mensa. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm so tired of it. It's just so ridiculous to have, you know. No, that's what this is. It's all about sides. Everybody's picked a side, and they've they've drawn their, their lines in the sand. Like, grow up. Grow well, up. It's, it's about like the truth. It's about figuring out what happened. Who cares? Who cares who I am? Who cares what I say? Who cares how the, the, the message like is delivered? If there is something to fight about, then there has to be a fight somehow. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe they're I'm, just trying I'm to distract us from talking about I'm the case. I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. I'm, I'm staying on here too long anyway. We've been on for over two and a half hours now. All right. Well, it was fun. Well, I'm glad you stopped by. When I saw you in the chat, I thought, all right. Good. And thank you to everybody in the chat who, you know, didn't yeah, decide. who can handle it. Yeah, Thanks to all the big girls who can handle it. So we'll do this again maybe in a week or so. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay. Good night.